Welcome back to the Padilla Family Homestead. I am going to be doing our November garden walk uh, in our green stocks. Uh, if you, this is your first time joining us, we're in California, an apartment gardener, zone 9B. So we have three of these green stock towers. Uh, it is November 11th, the day I'm filming this. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how everything is doing. Uh, we've got a lot of growth. We've had um, some rain actually and a lot of hail. So you're going to see some damage from hail. And um, we have some crazy squirrels around here, which is always fun. And um, we have been harvesting like crazy. We have gotten down to like 35 degrees at night a couple of nights which isn't too bad and everything's still doing good so uh, this first green stock tower uh, let's go ahead and start here we have three different types of brussels sprouts the top of all three towers have these same three different types of brussels sprouts uh, they're doing pretty good i'm starting to see a few little nodules pop in in here I was hoping these are gonna get taller but I don't know if that's gonna happen or not you can see right here that's going to be a Brussels sprout so this purple one though I'm telling you what it is so pretty I just love it so we've got this and then in the center we have radishes on these two over here I have been harvesting some of the radishes like these are getting look at all the greens on these um we do have a lot of cabbage loopers this one actually is primarily hail damage right here you can see in here we got some roots starting to grow this is supposed to be the wasabi radish and then we have another brussels sprout plant right there the sock is much thicker so the new growth going on in here the second row is not doing as great so we have turnips and rutabagas oh i just broke this so i will use this today in my soup um i do have some starting to root up in here which is a good sign it's just hard to get the camera in there we got some more starting to root up here I feel like these got too leggy but um, I'm not positive a lot of this stuff it's my first time growing them it's definitely my first time growing in this green stock I feel like those were more in ground before and I feel like they were reaching in here so I don't know um we have some more turnips over here look at that oops that one just broke too do you see that root oh yeah so I have been coming out here quite frequently actually and harvesting a lot of these greens because um I'm adding them to soups or eggs or whatever uh, this one is my green beans. I'm really hoping, which are purple beans. They're not green, they're purple. I'm really hoping we get something off of these before it um, totally frosts. I have a couple that are already starting to form little beans. Trying to get that to focus on the bean. There you go. So we have lots of flowers, lots of things starting to form. We're still getting new growth. So I don't know. We might we might get some beans before the frost. We might not. The hail and the wind really broke this one, which isn't great, but um, it is what it is. So I'm going to have to go back through and hook these up on the Brussels sprouts. That's what I've been doing. Um, this next row is all beets. They're definitely one of the slower growers, but they're coming in. Um, they're looking a lot more sturdy. 
I've got red beets and I've got golden beets. So these are definitely starting to thicken up a little bit. That particular one is not. This row again is radishes. Uh, these are the uh, ones that take a little bit longer. So we've probably got another month on these, I think. Maybe those will be our Christmas dinner. Um, yeah, I don't see any roots forming, but I will be harvesting some more of these greens. That whole row is those radishes. Now, these have been attacked pretty hard by our apartment gardeners with the leaf blowers. So, uh, this one may not do anything, but it's still giving me some greens. So that makes me happy. Um, we've had some mischievous squirrels on the bottom. They dug everything out. They actually dug into that one, but those seem to be surviving. They dug everything out, dug everything out. So I may get one carrot per pocket. I may go back in and sow some other things, but they definitely have been a menace this year. And that's that first tower. Now this tower is more leafy greens. Um, we have the Brussels sprouts again on the top. You could tell like this one's really short and squatty and doesn't have a lot of room for those Brussels sprouts to come in. So I'm curious why that particular one is so different. Uh, this purple one definitely has lots of room and this other one over here has two in the bucket and it's definitely didn't have enough root, root growth. So I may end up pulling one of these out still but they're definitely not growing as big. Um, over here, I have been harvesting radishes out of these pockets. These were the short uh, 28, 30 day varieties. And um, I have been coming in here and harvesting like this pocket, that's all that's left in there. So I need to come back through and re-sow. Um, the next row is all mustard. These mustard greens are gorgeous. Uh, they survived the hill pretty good. We have a little bit of damage, but overall, I think they're doing pretty good. So that's one of the green mustard varieties. Don't ask me why that one pocket is just like not doing great. This is that same variety. And then we get into the red mustard. And I sewed these pretty thick. I've been coming in here cutting some off but they're looking pretty good. Uh, this next row is kale. We've got our dino kale right here. A ragged jack I thought we were gonna lose, um, but it's holding on and it's growing, so it makes me a happy camper. Only had one of those. These two are scarlet kale. And then we have the two plants of um, blue scotch curl kale. So I'm really excited to see those come in. Um, they're surviving the cabbage loopers. So that makes me super happy. The next row is bronze lettuce. Uh, the cabbage loopers have eaten most of this. However, uh, we are starting to get uh, some bigger leaves now. The hail did a little bit of damage, but overall it's doing pretty good. So I should be able to come in here and harvest some salad this weekend. And then um, the Napa cabbage. So we got hail damage on this. We definitely had cabbage looper damage. And I'm questioning if we have a slug in there now. But overall, I have been harvesting some of these outer ones. I don't think in the green stock I'm going to let it completely head up. So I have been harvesting those, which is great. And on leaf blower days, I've been trying to turn this to the back, which they may be out today. And then I have some kohlrabi. I really thought these died, but apparently they didn't. So I'm just letting them do their thing. Um... 
they're not bulbing or anything like that. They, got, they get hit by the leaf blower more than anything, but they're hanging. And then down below we have some evergreen strawberries. And these strawberries are actually starting to put off some new strawberries, which is nice. And then I had planted a couple that went past their prime. And so I have little baby plants coming up. So we'll see if the squirrels don't dig those up. So that is the second planter, primarily greens. And then we're going to come over here. And this planter is becoming the nasturtium planter. <laughs> um, so we have Brussels sprouts across the top again. And on this particular one, the two green ones are doing amazing. And the purple one, not so amazing. So I do rotate this planter. Um, but for some reason over here, it's not getting everything it needs. So, and that was the experiment <coughs> my daughter wanted to do was figure out what does best where. Uh, the nasturtiums are in between on the top for the most part. And I don't have any flowers yet. However, uh, the cooler temps and the fertilizing of the fish food really help these things take off. I have been trimming this one off at the bottom because it just likes to grow like crazy. Um, we use this on our focaccia bread and we recently started using these bigger ones as nasturtium chips. We put a little bit of avocado oil and some salt and we roast them and they are thin and crispy and delicious. So uh, raw, they're pretty spicy, but um, with the roasting, they are super yummy. So we've got a couple different nasturtiums there. Um, our cabbage, I've lived and I've learned this is my first time really trying to grow big cabbage. And this got hit really hard with the um, hail, but it was also too hot. And you can tell like it looks like the Brussels sprout. So I don't think we're going to get ahead of cabbage out of this. However, I am using the greens. So um, I will start harvesting off of this one pretty soon here. Uh, the collards are pretty hidden. They were getting eaten pretty bad, but uh, they are st starting to take off, which is good because that's my daughter's favorite. Down here we have some more lettuce, some more cabbage. Again, really leggy. It was too hot, I think. Uh, the chives we've been harvesting off of. And then I'm going to come around this pole. More lettuce, more cabbage. We got some Swiss chard that was direct sown. Um, we have some bok choy, some more strawberry plants, more nasturtium. So that Swiss chard was in the house and I ended up moving it out because it wasn't doing super well and it has started taking off. The same with this particular one right here. All the leaves were really hard and dark red and I'm um, bringing it outside. I've got new growth and they're green. So I'll be able to start harvesting some of that pretty soon. Um, these strawberries have produced, but the squirrels got them. Okay, so that is what's going on in the outside garden. Um, I'm gonna end this video with a few clips of the inside garden. It definitely has uh, struggled. I need to water more uh, with having the fireplace running. I was realizing I needed to up that game. Um, but I do have some ripe tomatoes. Our lettuce is dead and the cucumbers inside did not work. But I will go ahead and take you in and show you that. All right, so this is the inside garden. I, like I said, the cucumbers are dead. I've got three of the orange hat tomatoes and they're growing. Um, I'm actually gonna need to find a way to raise these lights up and give them some more room and up the watering game with them. But we are absolutely, well, I am absolutely enjoying these little tomatoes. And then we've got some cilantro growing inside and I've got some dead lettuce. 
So these containers will be switched out for something else um, to keep growing. And uh, that's kind of what's going on on the inside. Well, thank you for joining along. Uh, we appreciate you following along on the journey. I hope that um, this inspires you to grow where you are, even if you are in an apartment in California. Um, we're allowed three planters, so I did the three towers. And um, it's working out. I mean, there's definitely challenges, but uh, I am harvesting continuously. And I love being able to have some fresh greens that I can easily add a few random leaves from all these different types of plants and add them into our soups and um, add them in with our eggs or whatever meals we're doing. And um, make sure that you're taking the advantage of um, the circumstances that you have in planting where you are. I will see you back here again in December for another garden tour.